So here's a discussion of number five from the 2023 AP Calc BC exam. So in this question, they tell us we've got two functions, f and g. They give us the graph of f and g. Uh, they show us this on the interval zero to three. They do give us the expression for g of x. And f is twice differentiable. We don't know what the equation for f of x is, but they do tell us that f of three is equal to two. And they do give us the value of the integral of f of x from 0 to 3. The answer to that integral is going to be 10. Now, part A asks us to find the area of the shaded region enclosed by the graphs of f and g. So if I break this down into three steps, slice, approximate, integrate. If I take a vertical slice of this region, any vertical slice I take, the top is always on f of x. The bottom is always on g of x. If I approximate the area of that slice as if it were a rectangle, I would take the top y minus the bottom y, which is f of x minus g of x for the height, multiply by the width, which would be delta x. So the approximate area of that one slice is here. Now, if I want to add together infinitely many of those slices areas within this region, I'm going to use the integral to do its job, add together infinitely many of these expressions. So Tossing this expression into an integral, the delta x in its limiting form is going to transition to a dx. My slices range with their x value, since this integral is set up with respect to x. My slices range from the x value of 0 to the x value of 3. I'm going to have to do this integral in a very specific way because of how they've basically set us up here. I know the answer to this integral right here, so I, I intentionally want to separate this into two separate integrals from 0 to 3, uh, one of f of x from 0 to 3, and then subtract off the integral of g of x from 0 to 3. Now, the integral of f of x from 0 to 3, we know the value of that, so we can just pop the 10 right in place of that. The integral of g of x, technically, you would need to do a u substitution for this integral, uh, but if you factor the 12 out and let u in front of the integral and let u equal this denominator. You don't pick up any new factors. You don't have any cancellation with other x's that needs to occur. So the integral ends up being 12 times the natural log of the absolute value of u. If we back substitute, we get to this. So with a u substitution situation that's pretty straightforward like this, you can definitely get away with just cutting straight to the answer as long as you're able to keep track of everything. Uh, and then we would have to toss in 3, toss in 0, and take a difference. That's what the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us to do. This line right here is honestly how I would urge you to leave your answer. That would receive full credit on the AP exam. I'm sure the scoring guidelines show something a little different. Uh, so if I, if I factor inside the set of parentheses, factor out a 12, that leaves me with natural log of 6 minus natural log of 3. Well, there's a property of logarithms that allows us to take the log of a a difference of two logs and write that as a log of a quotient uh, and then six over three of course is two so i'm guessing the scoring guidelines will probably show something like what you see in my bottom right corner here but like i said this line right here would receive full credit on the exam part b asks us to evaluate an improper integral uh, the improper integral goes from zero to infinity and it's g of x squared we want to find the value of that or, or show that it diverges. So if you square g of x, and g of x is given right here, squaring the numerator is going to give you a 144. Squaring the denominator is just going to leave you with 3 plus x quantity squared. You do have to be careful with your notation. You can't use the fundamental theorem of calculus with an infinite limit of integration. So you are going to have to replace that infinite limit of integration with some holding variable. I typically go with r. The one thing you want to be cautious of is that capital R is not used anywhere else within the problem. And in this particular problem, capital R isn't used anywhere else. So we'd be okay with the use of capital R the way that I'm using it right here. Uh, once again, this is a situation where you would technically need to do a U sub, let U equal what's in this set of parentheses. But once again, there's no cancellation that has to occur. There's no new constant that sneaks in. So as long as you can recognize that the antiderivative of u to the negative second is going to be u to the negative first divided by negative one. You can factor that 144 out like you see I've done and go straight to the integral value, excuse me, the antiderivative. We would have to toss in the upper limit, toss in the lower limit, and take a difference. So I've done a little bit as I went from this line to this line. I took the division by negative one and just 
applied it to the 144. So the 144 became negative. I also used the property of negative exponents that allows me to push this back to the denominator with a positive first power on that quantity. Putting r in, putting zero in would leave me with an expression like this. Now, when I check the limit as I approach infinity, one over infinity, three plus infinity is still infinity, and then one divided by infinity is zero. So this piece basically goes to zero. So I end up with negative 144 times negative one third. Uh, this line right here would not receive full credit because it's dependent on infinity. You would have to show that you know the value of one over infinity is zero. So this line right here would receive full credit if you do take time to simplify that. And what I'm sure the scoring guidelines are gonna show for this is 48. And that would mean that our integral does converge. We would diverge if this integral was infinity, negative infinity, or had a, a value that caused the limit to not exist. But in this case, we got a finite value of 48, and that means our integral converges to that value. Last part of this defines a new function, h. h is given by x times f prime of x, and we're asked to find the value of the integral of h of x from 0 to 3. Now, this is clearly a product, this structure for h, and you could consider a u substitution, but there's not really an obvious choice for u. There's not uh, any way to, to get that u substitution to work successfully. So in Calc BC, you've obviously learned integration by parts, and integration by parts is going to allow us to integrate a lot of products. And if we let u equal the first part of the product and let dv equal the second part of the product, to find what du is, I would take the derivative of this, and du dx would be 1, so du is actually going to equal dx. And then if I integrate both sides of this equation, that'll tell me that v is equal to f of x, right? The antiderivative of f prime takes me back to f. So the integral from 0 to 3 of h of x is going to be equal to uv, right? So x, f of x. Now, I, this is a definite integral, so I would have to evaluate that at 3, evaluate that at 0, and take a difference, and then minus the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x dx, that would be u, excuse me, uv minus v du. This right here, they give us the value for that, right? The integral from 0 to 3 of f of x is 10, so we can just put 10 directly in place of this integral after the subtraction. I do have to evaluate this at 3 and 0 and take a difference. So when I evaluate at 3, I get 3f of 3. When I evaluate at 0, I get 0f zero of 0. Well, this time 0 is going to cause this piece to turn into a 0. Uh, actually, this line that I'm just crossing that out on, it would receive full credit. I'm sure the scoring guidelines are going to show negative 4 is the answer, and you would get that negative 4 by recognizing that f of 3 is equal to 2. They give us that in the problem statement. It should also be pretty evident from the, the graphs, and, and we maybe would have noticed this back in part A as well when we were finding the area bounded by those graphs, uh, but your final answer should be negative 4.